Which papers? Kadarius, you were not here at all last week, correct? There's one more assignment that I would need to give you, but it's printing right now. Oh, I need Venn diagrams. Who has their Venn diagram? Ready to turn in? Put your name on it. Make sure it's on there. Talk about it. Oh, yeah, it's just one thing. It's already printed. I just have to go get it now. Thanks, sir. Uh, Monday and Thursday afternoons normally, and in the mornings on Tuesday, Friday. Can I get that answer? I gotta get up. Yes. Hold on. Sorry. No one else has their diagram. Who does not have a copy of the Venn diagram on them right now? Who does not have a copy on them right now? Yeah, I gotta figure out because they're, they're not here. Tristan, can you, if you, if you turned it in on Friday, grab or get a copy from Tristan right now. Um, I don't know what happened to them, and no one can. Uh, I'll have to find them. So, I will find a Caleb. I'll talk to. No, no, no. Do you have it with you? Guys, if you do not have the Venn diagram with you right now, you need to get a copy of it unless you turned it into me right now. Because we are missing some of them. I can't find it. No, everyone else has a copy in their notebook or gave one to me. Yes. So I'm not going to hear that I need a copy of this from anyone else today. Okay, so let's look at the bell ringer. Nope, that's not what I need. Okay, I said this very clearly on last Thursday. Which volume of the book did I tell you we will get to either today or at the very latest tomorrow? Mario. He had his hand up before you did, CJ. So, what should you definitely 100% have in class tomorrow? Volume, volume, volume 1. Okay. Yes, Tristan. Okay, so on these, how do I do these? We're going to talk about some. So, you need volume 1 with you in class tomorrow. I am slightly changing my plans today based on the fact that 10 of us don't have our volume 1 with us. You need to have it tomorrow. Let's look at this bell ringer to get us started, though. All right. Um, you know, Chelsea and Louise. A lot of us, yes, sir. About the bell ringer. Okay, hold on one second. So I'm just gonna look up here. A whole lot of us said it was quadratic. Um, and then we have a smattering of linear or exponential up there, but not a whole lot of consistency there, uh, other than with quadratic. So, can someone who said quadratic tell me why they said quadratic? Twelve of us said it, at least, so I, I'm going to start pulling up names if so no one can tell us. CJ, what you got? I think it's quite um, quadratic because I started at zero, and then I, um, so I did 24 minus 16. No, I did 24 divided by 16, and I got 1.5. And then I was like 16 times 1.5, and then I got 24, and I did the same thing. So I think it's quadratic. So you did 24 divided by 16? Okay. So if you don't remember, we talked about this a little bit last week. We didn't talk about it very heavily. You can do a division thing there to try to find what does division connect to? Repeated? 
Repeat. Sorry, I should say this. If you have repeated division, that would be equivalent to the idea of repeated multiplication, right? So um, that would maybe indicate that it's exponential. And so from that, CJ, because you tried 24 times 1.5 and didn't get 16, so you said it's not um, exponential. Okay. Anybody else? Can we tell? Can you tell us why we thought it was quadratic? <clears throat> All right, Caitlin, Kaysen, Skyler, Damarian, Jamarcus, Jaden, Inslee, who else? Tristan, Kennedy, Martavius, CJ, and Brooks all said quadratic, so I need to know why. Well, my, I, mean, I put quadratic too. I said Tristan, dude. Tristan Hunnam. Uh, then you must have been one of these that spelled it as quadratic equations or quadratic functions. Yes? I'll probably say it wrong. <laughs> okay, so guys, I want to point this out. Headphone out, right? Or, yeah, headphones out. But this is actually a really important thing. If you could tell me why it's not linear, that is evidence that it's probably quadratic, right? Mm -hmm. So, why is it not linear? So are you adding or subtracting 18? Huh? Well, I'm saying if you do 54 minus 36, you get 18, indicating, are you saying that you're adding that 18 or subtracting that 18? There's a reason why I'm asking this question. I know that's not the pattern draft. I'm saying, if we were to go from 54 to 36, would I add or subtract 18? Subtract. So the reason why I bring this up, listen to me very clearly on this, you can do 54 minus 36, but that's not what you would want to do. You would want to do 36 minus 54, because what do I get from that? 18. Negative. Negative 18. And that's important because I am subtracting 18. Does that make sense? You see how, you said it's subtracting 18, right? So I'm going to take this number, I'm going to subtract the previous one to figure out what the addition or subtraction was. Okay, that's just to figure out that that's minus 18. In a similar way, I would do 24 minus 36, not the other way around. Was 24 minus 36? Indicating I'm subtracting, I'm just subtracting 12, right? Not subtracting a negative, just subtracting 12. And so you can use that right away to tell me why it's not linear. It's not the same, right? If, if it's linear, what should we know about a linear function? It's a, Not just a pattern. It's a constant addition. Right? And I will say, CJ had his hand up. Be respectful of that. Uh, constant additive rate of change, right? A constant additive rate of change. That's very clearly not constant additive. Now, is... Now, I'll, I'll hold off on that. So it's not constant additive. So a lot of us are thinking quadratic from that information. Um, but, okay, so let's look at it. Minus 18, minus 12, minus... I believe 8. I have no clue what that would be. Yeah. Can you pick up a calculator and do 32 thirds minus 16 for me? 32 thirds minus 16? Negative 16 divided by 3? So if this is quadratic, what should we notice here? Ooh, actually, pause. I'm going to come back to that. Don't, let's not talk about that yet. I want to ask this because I will note. We made our, hard, our job harder than it had to be on this question. What mathematical representation did I give you? A table. A table. Did I tell you you had to stay with the table? No, you did not. I did not. Does anyone know a mathematical representation I could have used, created out of that table? Could I have quickly made a graph? I probably would have just done a sketch, right? But yeah, I could have quickly made a graph and just estimated where things are. So in the x, I need to go out to negative 3. And I need to go to the right three. Um, I need to go all the way up to 54, so I'm not going by ones. What's a good number to go up by 54 if I need 16, 24, and 36? Seven. No. Five. I might do tens, maybe fives. But hold on, 16 doesn't perfectly hit a five. Isn't a multiple of five, is it? Eight. Eight. Say that again. Four. 
What's a multiple or a factor that goes into 16, 24, 36, and 54? Four. Fours. I would probably go by fours. That's just me. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, 44, 48, 52, and there's 56. Okay, so it's a little off, but it's very, very close for the majority of these. Just a quick sketch. Could you go by tens? Sure. Um, you just have to estimate more with those tens. So let's look at this. Negative 3, 54 would be right here in the center. Negative 2, 36 would be right here. Um, negative 1, 24 here. 0, 16 here. 1, 32 divided by 3. Was that almost 11? So there we go. 64 divided by 9. I know 63 divided by 9 is 7. So just a little over 7. And then um, 128 divided by 27. Can someone put that in the calculator? Because I got no clue. Somewhere around 5. 128 divided by 27? Tristan, it helps if we pick up the calculator, my man. Oh, no, we can yeah, what? Uh, but hit control enter to get a decimal. 4.74. Okay, so 3, 4.74, somewhere in here. Do you still think it's quadratic? If it's, we've looked at a curve that looks like this. Notice how it's very steep and then it starts to flatten out. Oh. What type of function was super steep and then started to flatten out? That's what? It's exponential decay? I didn't hear the decay part. That's why I just wanted to point out. That's exponential decay, isn't it? Yes. Still think it's quadratic? No. No. Guys, please remember the different representations give a different uh, aspect of the story, but that, t that graph could really open up my eyes to say, okay, that, that's exponential. And now, okay, so CJ, we may have made a mistake when trying to do that division. Remember, remember how I suggested earlier, not 54 minus 36, but 36 minus 54? In the same way, CJ, I don't want to do 24 divided by 16. I want to do 16 divided by, type in 16 divided by 24. What do you get? Two thirds. Meaning that I am doing what with that two thirds? I am. Multiplying. Okay, remember, you did that division to show what we're multiplying by. Because they're inverses, right? Pay attention right here. To go from 16 to 32 thirds, I can't be subtracting integers and then get to a fraction like this. But if I go from 16 to 32 thirds, what would I have automatically had to divide by to go from a 16 to a divided by 3? I'd have to divide by what? No, no, what would I have to divide by to get division by 3? Three? 3, right? What would I have to do to the 16 to get a 32? Multiply by 2. Remember, we're looking at multiplicative rate of change, right? So I needed to multiply by 2. Oh, does that match here? Yes. It should be the same story throughout, guys. When I see going from an integer to a fraction, a rational number like this, and I see, oh, I went to divide by 3, i got to divide by 3. Notice how I'm now dividing by 9, because what's 3 times 3? 9, right? What do I do to 32 to get to 64? Times what? Two. So I'm multiplying by 2 and dividing by 3. We want to recognize that fraction is times 2 thirds. Or times 2 divided by 3. So check it. Look at the top. What is 54 times 2 thirds? 54 times 2 thirds. Oh. It is the same number, isn't it? If you are um, unsure with how to multiply by that fraction, do not forget what that fraction really means. All that times two-thirds really means is that I'm multiplying by two and then dividing by three. It's times two-thirds. 
What is 36 times 2 thirds? I sure hope so too. Let's check it. Is it 24? Oh. So what type of function are we dealing with? Exponential. How do we know that? Okay, so what defines an exponential function? And I will point this out. So let's pause and remember this. I'm going to come back to what Kennedy is saying in a second. First off, right here, Tristan, look at that graph. What shape is that? Well, of what function? Which we should have notes on this, which is why we should have our notes out. No, it's not called a C. We call it, we named this shape in the dream job salary task. We need dream job salary and we need gold rush out. Kenny, what you got? It's literally called an exponential curve. You see this shape, the name of it is an exponential curve every time. We specifically talked about if part of it is really steep and the other sections flattening out, it's an exponential curve. And Damarian brought up, it's not just an exponential curve, this is an exponential decay because it is decreasing. These notes that I'm asking you to take, guys, are not for my help. It's because you need this information. Because at its core, what is mathematics? Study of, study of patterns and relationships. And so what things do you need to be doing? You need to do what with those patterns and relationships? You need to notice. You want to describe and generalize. We have generalized this. The whole class notes is the generalization. It's what you need to study. It's what we should have used to do the Venn diagram. Okay? We are generalizing. We're noticing and we're just and describing during the small group time, but then we generalize during the whole class time, discussion time. You gotta study those notes, which means we need to take notes. Ain't no sleeping in my class. You may get by for a couple weeks sleeping in my class because we well, haven't done a whole lot of assessments. We're about to start ramping up with assessments on linear, exponential, and quadratic functions. You better have solid notes. If you don't have solid notes, go watch the videos on YouTube. I record every single day. And I post every single day. But we have an exponential curve here. And so Tristan, when we see that exponential curve, we immediately know, hey, it's exponential. What do we see in the table now that we've correctly identified it to also confirm that it's exponential? Not just consistency. What type of consistent? Consistent what? Pattern. What pattern? Multiplicative rate of change. change. Guys, I need you to hear me very clearly on this. On the dream job salary task, you need to write big and bold that the rate of change defines a function. We can see functions in other ways, but in general, you can put it on the Venn diagram as well. The rate of change defines that function. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. You said rate of change. Rate of change. Yes, sir. We have a There's job. the short ones over there. Okay. Mr. King. Yes, ma'am. We have a dream job. We have an extra. I do, actually. Just print it out. Who needed it? Here you go. I'm grab it. I'm just writing this up here. The rate of change defines the type of function. That is one of the most generalized things that we have to know. The rate of change defines the type of function. And which representation are we going to see that rate of change most clearly in? No, no, no. Where are we most clearly going to see that rate of change? Which representation? The, the table is where we're seeing that rate of change, right? We're going to see that rate of change in tables. We've got to pay attention to that. Now that graph can also tell us what type of function it is, but the rate of change is what defines the type of function. you got to know that. The rate of change defines the type of function. Questions so far? Hey, Mr. King. Sir. One, yes. The reason I posted the solutions, or post videos every single day. However, two, we're not on the test yet. We're just on the understanding check. Okay? It's on Wednesday. Remember that the understanding check is just a check on your understanding. So when we have a test, if you learn from your mistakes or learn from the things that you didn't know, the test grade can replace the understanding check grade. So even if you make a zero, which hopefully we don't make a zero because it's mostly on just identifying the type of function, 
even if you make it zero, if you make a 75 or a 92 on the test, that's what your grade would be. So take it for me, see where we are. Make sense? Tristan. Can we define each function real quick? Like I'll throw it on. Please. We did that very heavily last week. We're gonna go over a couple of details. You can watch the videos for the things that you don't have, but we gotta take our notes. Huh? But the video makes so long. Then watch the parts of the whole class discussion. But you don't have the time where like you gotta separate it on like on YouTube and be doing it. You need a little time stamp. Yeah. Yeah. I do put time stamps. That is countdown. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Those are timestamps. If you go and watch the video, the video is literally split from 0 to 5, and it's this section. 5 to 22 is this, and so I go through and I do those timestamps every day. Go to the description, it's there. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. We're going to talk about it in just a second. Okay. So, last thing before we start with some notes, I do want to point this out. If I asked you to write an equation, because we're going to do this at the end of today's lesson, or at the last 30 minutes or so of class, if I were to ask you to write this equation, you've got to identify the type of function first. Because what can you then write down very easily now that we know it's exponential? What can we write down very easily now that we know it's exponential? Rate change. We already have the rate of change, but if I'm asking you to write an equation, you gotta write like that. Just by the table on the bill. We're gonna use that in a second, but no. Listen to my question. Okay. If I ask you to write an equation for this function, what should we know immediately? CJ. F of x. F of x. Equals, equals a not a squared, a, a times b times b, b, b equals, oh, exponent of x. What type of function is this? Exponential. Because remember, in exponential functions, we are repeatedly what? Multiplying. You see how we have multiplication here? And then what here is telling me that it's repeated multiplication? The, 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 the exponent that has a, so a variable. We're about to do that. Okay? But guys, as soon as I see that it's an exponential function, regardless of the representation, I'm trying to write that equation. I'm going to write that equation down. Now we need to know what these pieces mean. What is A? Notice. The A is just there. It's just the starting value. What starting value do we want? Zero T. Zero. Why do you say 16? Oh, because if, if the X is zero, that's the Y intercept. intercept. It's where it intersects the Y axis. We want to remember that the best uh, starting value, the easiest starting value, the Y intercept, or is the Y intercept? we got to notice that A is there only one time. So I'm starting with a 16. And then what's happening to that 16? So I still have the times. Times what? Two thirds. Remember, there's an exponent right here. That exponent's indicating repeated exponent. Multiplication. What's being repeatedly multiplied? Two thirds. Then to the X. That's it. So you have to know what the pieces of the equation are. But if you can identify the type of function, write the equation, and then substitute the values in. But you've got to know what A and B are. But if you focus on the fact that A just happens once, that's my starting value. It's B to the X because I'm repeatedly multiplying by B. Well, what am I repeatedly multiplying by? Two thirds in this case. But it changes. So you've got to find that multiplicative rate change. Okay? Um, I'm, trying, I'm trying to word this right way so I don't confuse or lie to you. You don't have to, but it is the easiest. If you started with, say, this 36, you would have to change the equation to look like this. 36 times, I'm still multiplying by 2 thirds, but I would have to do x an exponent of x plus 2 because I'm starting with that negative 2. So I have to change the equation a little bit. Um, technically, what's happening right here is it's 
x minus 0 because the input is 0. So when it, it's easiest when I have the line intercepts because then it's 0. Okay. Does that make sense, Kayla? So it, you can write it with points other than the y intercept. It's just more complicated and we're not focusing on that right now. Sir? How Okay, but you didn't have anything to write the notes on. Go back, write the notes, and, and study those notes, and focus on the whole class discussion. Okay? Huh? So this this information is from the dream job salary task that we did last Tuesday and Wednesday, I believe. Part of Tuesday, part of Wednesday, and then some of the other notes are going to be from the gold rush task that were Wednesday and Thursday. Nope, that's it. Well, that's, the, that's what we learned about exponential functions. We learned about exponential uh, functions, linear functions, and quadratic functions last week. Here, let's do this. We actually are wrapping up with some notes on quadratics right now. First things first, what happened with iReady last week? Uh, I did. Okay. So, um, I'm gonna. I'm trying to work with Mr. Hinton then to have iReady open back up, and hopefully it'll work for Wednesday. Um, if iReady definitely does not work, then we will be doing the literacy for all assignments and wrapping. Up, and you'll also be doing an understanding check on Wednesday. Not literacy for all, math literacy. Um, Slightly different, and I'll go over it tomorrow with y'all. So, yeah, I figured that was the case, but I just wanted to check. Um, hopefully, we will get iReady back open so that y'all can work through it. Uh, we're going to do some final notes on the Gold Rush task, which will answer some of your questions about quadratics at least, and we'll talk through some other details. Then we're going to touch on some small things with the Venn diagram before we work on linear exponential functions and equations. We will not get to that section. That's tomorrow. Alright, skipping that, we already talked about this. So, I will remind you again, you need to have your notes out. I'm tired of people blindly staring at me or blankly staring at me without their notes out. Use your notes. There's a reason why I go over these things in detail. I know that's not the exciting part of class. We'd rather be up, we'd rather be working at the boards, and I get that. But at the same time, I have to go do these notes so that we can wrap up what y'all discovered what you notice, what you describe, and so that you have good, strong, accurate generalizations. Um, and so, please remember, when we talk about each of these functions, what defines each type of function? The rate of change. The rate of change, right? We've already said it. Exponential functions have what rate of change? Multiplicative. Not just multiplicative. Constant. Constant. Multiplicative, right? It's repeatedly multiplying by the same thing every time, right? Well, we're going to look at quadratic rates of change in just a second or do a reminder of that. And then we need to understand how each functions now, right now, quadratic functions appear in tabular, graphical, and algebraic representation. So we looked at this gold rush task uh, last week where Dan Jackson um, owned some land where gold had been found. And we wanted to find the best dimensions that have the most area so that we have the best chance to find gold. And so what we're going to focus on right now is number three analyzing the representations that we created. So when we looked, the first thing that most of us did was make a table, right? Um, did we start with a base of 0 or a base of 50? Base of 50? And worked by 5 down to 0? 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, and 0. Um, and we talked about it, we only have 100 meters of rope, so what did the base and height have to add up to? 100. Remember, when we talk about a rectangle, there's two bases and two heights, so just the base and just one base and one height had to be 50, right? So if the base is 50, the height had to be 0. If the base is 45, the height is 5, then 10, 15, 20. 40, 45, and 0. And then to calculate the area, right? We wanted the best area. <coughs> what do we do to calculate that area? Multiply, right? Area is literally base times height. 50 times 0 is 0. 45 times 5 was 225. Okay? 40 times 10 was 400. 
35 times 15 was 525. Then 600, 625, 600, 525, 400, 225, and 0. That's supposed to be 50. Area. So we were calculating the area, Kadarius, because the bigger the area, the better chance to find gold. Right? You have a bigger plot of land to look at. Yes, sir. Um, so what you might want to think about is you still have 100 meters of rope, right? So what you could do is you would um, think about it as if the height was 50, could you go to the right at all for the base? Not really. You just have to basically circle back around and go back. So they would have 50 here, and this would really just be a point, and that'd be zero. So it would be 50 meters up, turn around, 50 meters back. That, that's why we have that zero there. Make sense? Okay. So, what do we need to look at in this table? What are tables great for finding? We already looked at it once. Patterns, patterns right? Okay, so they're great for organizing data, they're great for identifying patterns. So, we talked about it. There's nothing I could multiply zero by to get 225. Literally, zero times anything is what? Zero. So it's not exponential. So to go from zero to 225, what's happening? Adding 225. 225 to 400, what's happening? Plus 175. If we're not sure, remember, you can take 400 and yeah. subtract the 225, but we should already have this in our notes for plus 175, right? 400 to 525? 525. 525 to 600? 600 to 625? And then 625 to 600? I'm adding 25 here? Subtracting 25. 600 to 525. And we should already start to notice pattern. I'm going to continue this in a second. But notice, is this constant additive? It's definitely not. So what do I know? I know it's not exponential. I know it's not what? Because it's not constant additive. It's not linear. Right? This would have to be constant additive to be a linear function. It's not. So what's happening to go from 225 to 175? It was minus 50. What about 175 to 125? Minus 50. Minus 50 still? Mm -hmm. Yes. Still minus 50? Mm -hmm. Still minus 50? Mm -hmm. So any guesses what I would do to that negative 75? I would subtract 50 to get minus 25. <coughs> minus 50 again gives me minus 175. Minus 50. Gives me minus 225. That's a pattern, right? It may not appear that way at first, but we now see something that is constant additive. Why do you do minus 50 something like that? Well, because I want us to see, is this a pattern that all happens all the way through? It's not minus 50. Yeah. I'm saying what makes you do it. Well, because I want something that's constant. I, to, to recognize, to, I'll point this out. These numbers, there's symmetry there, but they almost look random at first, right? Like, it doesn't look like there's a pattern to go from 225 to 400, then to 525. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no, it doesn't look like there's a pattern. So I look to see what is changing. Well, it's plus 225, plus 175. That looks less random. Well, why is it less random? Because it's constantly subtracting by 50 right here. Okay? The question might say that minus 50 is Say again? The question might say that minus 50 is No. Okay, uh, and remember, you're gone for a week, but what were the objectives, literally? What was the first objective up there? So what am I looking at right here? Can I take a picture of No. Why not? Take notes. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's the rate of change. You see, this is literally defining how it's changing. And what defines every type of function? I know you weren't here last week, but I already mentioned at the beginning of class, what defines each type of function? Rate of change. Say it louder, Zarya. Rate, rate of change, right? So I'm looking for a rate of change. I'm looking for a pattern. Well, not just came up with a 50. To go from 225 to 175, what's happened? Subtracting 50. To go from 175 to 125, what's happening? 
minus 50. Okay, so it's not random, like that's literally what was happening. I'm subtracting 50 each time. Okay, I got you now. So here's the thing to remember. Which of these adding and subtracting, right, the purple or the pink, which of those is my rate of change? The pink. The purple. We need to be careful, you need to be intentional about this. The pink tells me a lot. The rate of change, though, is always the first column. This is my rate of change. That, that is my rate of change, okay? The first column is always what tells me my rate of change. The minus 50 is important, though. This minus 50 is constant what? Additive. additive. Notice I am not calling it a rate of change. It is constant additive, though. It's not my rate of change, but that pink is constant additive. Yes? I feel like, uh, like on the test, when you say you are looking for like a quadratic function, would you say um, something that could just consist of like this constant additive? Because, okay, so let's pause and let's remember, what type of function has a constant additive rate of change? A linear function has a constant additive rate of change. This is constant additive, so what does that tell me my rate of change is? It's a linear additive rate of change. Right? If this is constant additive, this rate of change is linear additive. So because it's a linear additive rate of change, what type of function do I have? A linear. Not exponential. Remember, what defines exponential? It's a what? Quadratic. Quadratic, guys. Yes, Caleb. Quadratic. This is, remember, this black function for the area, that was the quadratic. Now I'll rewrite this a little bit bigger to the side in a second. But notice, we talked about this as a quadratic function. Literally, the gold rush task is to explore what? What's in the top right-hand corner of that paper? Quadratic functions, right? This area is quadratic, and what rate of change did it have? Linear additive, right? Quadratic functions. Have linear additive rates of change. But I needed that constant, because doesn't that constant tell me where the linear component is, or the linear piece is? Constant additive, linear additive rate of change. I'll answer CJ's question, then I'll let CJ go. How is that linear, though? What do you mean? Like, it's just linear, but like, how is, like, I, I understand, like, the additive, but how is it, like, linear? Well, I mean, what do you know about a linear function? A linear function has a what? A On a graph, yes, I'll get to that in a second. But a, fun a linear function has what rate of change? Constant. Constant additive. additive, right? This is constant additive. This is the rate of change of the rate of change, right? That's constant additive. That's the rate of change of the rate of change. So I don't want to call it a rate of change, but that's constant additive. So the rate of change has to be linear additive. Notice, so instead of it's a line on the graph, 25, I'm going to go by 25s here. So 25, um, 50, 75, 100, 25, 150. Okay, so um, I, I'm just going to kind of sketch. So 10, 20. All right, so 125 went with the 40, so well, we'll want the 10. And then 15 was 75. And then the 20 was 25. No, nope, that's 75. So notice this black right now, this is actually the purple function. But what shape, or the rate of change, what shape is that rate of change? A line. A line. So what type of rate of change is it? It's a linear additive rate of change. So you can see it graphically like that as well. I don't usually recommend graphing the rate of change though because 
That's not the function, that's the rate of change. But you can see that that rate of change is literally linear. All I did was I graphed these purple points right here. Does that answer those questions? Yes, Ireland. So for quadratic functions, they're going to have, it's going to be adding and subtracting rate of change. Eventually, you won't always see the adding and subtracting, and you have to be careful because you saying adding and subtracting, what that literally is is increasing and decreasing. Mm -hmm. We will study a set of functions that also increase and decrease but are not quadratic. Okay? You've got to focus on the rate of change. Okay? You've got to focus on that rate of change. Does that make sense? So it's not just adding and subtracting, it's that the rate of change is linear additive. Notice, constant, so linear. Once you get to constant, what's always to the left of constant additive? No, 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 no. What's to the left of constant additive? Linear. linear. So, linear, but that's a rate of change, so it's a linear additive rate of change. What's to the left of linear? Quadratic. Constant, linear, quadratic. Yes, Ireland. Um, we will always be yes. yes. Okay. Did we talk about the graphs at all last week? No, we heard. We didn't. Yeah. <laughs> you want to hear it, Darius? We did or did not? No. We didn't draw graphs out, out for this. We we at least we did it on the we calculator, did. didn't we? Yeah. Okay. So we need to draw um, really quickly. This is just a sketch. I'm not going to draw the axes or anything like that. But notice we start at, uh, and I'm going to use the height as the point here. Actually, yeah. So 0, 0, uh, we have it right here, 0, 0. And then the peak is at that 25, 6, 25. And so if you graph it, it looks like this. So that's 50, 0. And this is 0, 0. That is the shape of a quadratic function. Now, this shape does have a name. It's not as straightforward as linear or exponential. Does anyone remember the shape of this graph? CJ? Parabola. Say it louder. Parabola. The shape of a quadratic is a parabola. I thought it was a parabola. It's not. <laughs> okay. Um, parabola is probably you thinking about Ebola, but it's a parabola. Okay. It's a parabola. That's the shape of a quadratic function. I mean, there's a, there are infinitely many types of functions. The only three that we... Are you talking about, like, what type of function would it be? No, I'm saying, if it has is it the key word, like, what else would it be? Well, if it's quadratic, it is a parabola. This is the generalizing part. Every quadratic function has a parabola as the shape, or as the graph. But if it's exponential, it has an exponential curve. If it's linear, it has a line. So if we're so going to be exponential, linear, or quadratic. Or quadratic. For now, we're going to add more functions in, but those are the functions we're reviewing from Algebra 1. Ireland, were you saying something? So if we were given like a pictorial, um... Most of the time, if you're given a pictorial yeah. representation, you either need to make a graph or a table to make sense out of what type of function it is, right? It's the beauty of flexibility. You need to create a different representation. Now, there's a few key parts to this parabola that we need to be aware of. There's this point. Anybody know what this point is called? The um, Chris. Chris. It starts with a V. The Mathematically. Base. Say again. Base. Not the base. V. Um, I you Say that louder. Vertex. Yeah. That is known as the vertex of the parabola. That is known as the vertex of the parabola. Can I erase this information about the rate of change? No. Yes. Do you have it written down? I'm, I'm trying there, to yes, I can erase it so that you, I can draw something above it. No. No, no, dude. Take, take notes. How long has that been up there? You know what I'm saying? I'm still a tune, Miss Kim. I just had to write that down while you were doing this. Then, then go pull up the video, guys. All right. like, I, I can't wait because we're not taking notes. Okay. Because I need to draw something above it that goes with this. 
Now, this game, sir, this is my homework. Okay. The parabola is the shape of a quadratic. We have that vertex there. And then another key thing that we'll talk about soon is this line. Now, that line's not actually there. I'm drawing it dashed because we want to picture it there. Does anyone notice anything about that graph in respect to that line? Yeah, that's it. So this line is called a line of symmetry. symmetry. It's a line, or it's sometimes called an axis of symmetry. A line or an axis of symmetry. That's it. A line or an axis of symmetry. And then we have a vertex, and then we have a shape. We have the parabola. What's that shape? Slushy. 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 This is the other form that a parabola can take. Notice it looks almost identical, but it just goes in the opposite direction. And because we have these different directions, we have a name for those directions. Yep, this is it. This is known as concave of parabola. The easy way to remember it, and the way that I was taught this in high school and I still remember it, is that it is a concave, it is concave up like a, any guesses? Concave. We want to, we want to rhyme, guys. Concave up like a... Oh. <laughs> One, how does that rhyme? And two, what? <laughs> Tristan, did we forget to do something when we walked into class, sir? <laughs> Concave up like a cup. Concave up like a cup. <laughs> So, anyone want to guess what this black one would be? Concave down like a brown. I don't. I don't know too many. Uh, I, legitimately, the rhyming also goes with the shape. Like, if you look at the concave up one, could you pour water into it? Mm -hmm. Like a cup, right? Mm -hmm. Concave down like someone is what? Brown. Brown. Okay, yeah, I'll be gay. Thanks. So, concave down like it's someone frowning, concave up like a cup because it can hold water. Okay? How are we going to remember these, though? Study. <laughs> like, when we see it, how are we going to say we can know that? Is that? Study. Okay. You, you want these notes. S study your notes. And when you see that shape, that should come to your mind. It's a concave up parabola. I'm embedding the vocabulary into teaching you these things and showing you pictures and stuff like that. And as soon as I see a concave up parabola, what type of function do I immediately know it is? It's quadratic. Like that's what you need to do. You need to recognize the type of function off of that. Okay. Yes, Tristan. Alright, what if it's down? What is it then? What do you mean? Like it's still, it, it, it's still a function. Quadratic. It's still a quadratic function. function. It's always going to be quadratic. No. It is a, if it's a what? What's the key word here? Parabola. No, parabola, parabola, right? Concave up or down is just the difference in direction. The fact that it's a parabola tells me it's quadratic. Yeah, so we got to move faster with the back half of the class. Um. What's the last representation we have not addressed? No, representation. Not type of function. We've got a graph right here. We started with verbal. Have we written an equation yet? An algebraic? Sorry. Uh, pictorial? So remember when we did the rectangles, that was the pictorial. But remember when someone just said equations, the algebraic, that's what we want to focus on, right? So, uh, I need to do better about this, addressing this when it shows up in class. But most of us actually could have started on this equation right away. What did you know about the area immediately for this function? How do we calculate the area? Based on height. Based on height. That's the starting point for this equation. That we're doing based on height. OK? 
Okay? Based on time. So I want to write an equation um, in function notation. So I might do a of b. What does that mean? A, a parentheses b. Be careful. This is why I did this intentionally. Notice, this is not multiplication. This should remind us of f of x. That's the function notation. In this case, x is the what for the function? In Equality. Input. 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 It's called an input. Okay? X is the input. F of X is the output. Okay? In the same way, for this function, what's the input variable? The B. And what's the output? The A, which is my area. The variables mean something in this context. So I'm going to keep the B here. But I cannot have two independent variables, or two inputs. I want to have just one to be able to graph it and stuff like that. So is there a way to rewrite the height in terms of the base? Another, and we did this when we graphed it on the calculator, but another thing to remember is, is there an equation for the base and the height, or that relates the base and the height? Yeah, that's the area. I need a different one, though, right? Can we? That's an exponential. Guys, what do we know about our base and our height? They add up to 50 every time, right? So base plus height equals 50. So if I could find out what h is equal to using this equation, I could substitute this in for h. Well, if base plus height equals 50, what is just the height equal to? Zero. The height is always equal to zero over there? No. No? It's what? So it is repeatedly adding 5 to the height. There's an easier way to do it, because I will point this out. If we're repeatedly adding 5 to the height, we're also taking away, five, taking away 5 from the base, so we don't want to necessarily think of that. But look at this equation, guys. B plus H equals 50. How could I get H completely on its own? Divide it. Equals 8. <laughs> if I subtract 50 on both sides, I would get b plus h minus 50 equals no. 0. Did that get 8? Or equals 0. Did that get h on its own? No. Not minus 50. Subtract h. But I want h on its own. Say that again. What's b minus b? 0. And what's 0 plus h? H. H. Did I get H on its own? H. Yeah. 50 minus B? 50 minus B. Yes, ma'am. Trying to write this equation. We're trying to write this equation. Okay, pause it. I'm not done. Pause and listen. I'm going back to the basics. I'm trying to write this equation. But. <laughs> I cannot have two variables like this. I can't. Because for function notation, if I look at a graph, how many independent variables are there on a graph? Independent variables? I don't know what you mean. Okay. Good point. It's always one independent, one dependent. There's the x and there's the y. X and Y, independent, dependent variables, inputs and outputs. Okay? So when I come over here, the area is going to be my dependent, my Y value. I can only have one independent variable, and so I'm going to write it as base. Okay? Hold on, Tristan. And so I have to rewrite what the height is in terms of the base. Because I know H is equal to 50 minus B now, that 50 minus B can take the place of what? H. H. H is equal to that, right? So that 50 minus B can take the place of H. How many variables do I have on the right-hand side now? One. That was the point. We are almost there. You just wait a second. I would re-explain all the way through there. So now I need to write right there. 
But that is the equation we need to write. What's your question, Tristan? <laughs> so guys, when you write the equation, you can only have one independent variable. And I will tell you this. Please hear me very clearly on this. When it comes to quadratic functions and quadratic equations, we're going to spend a whole week plus on just writing quadratic equations. This is just an intro into quadratic equations and what we need to notice about it. I'm not expecting you to get to that point on your own. Yes, sir? You said you was trying to get the age by a certain age, though. What? <laughs> what? You said you were trying to get the age by itself, the age, though. No, no, no. I was trying to get the age by itself up here because if h is equal to 50 minus b, right, what can be substituted in for h? So that is h. Right. It's just a different way to write h. So that I have only one variable. Does that make sense? Okay. You good? Okay. So, here's what I want us to notice. One way to write a quadratic equation is a product, meaning I'm multiplying. Does anyone know what type of function just this expression on its own. Like if I were to just do y equals b or y equals a, that'd be x. What type of function would that be? Yeah. Say it again. Linear. So that's a linear expression. What type of expression would this be? If I were to graph it, what would I see? Just the 50 minus b. So what? It's a line. Isn't that like a plus bx? Right? One of the telltale marks of a linear is the variable has what as the exponent? And understood one. So what I want us to notice, and this is going to come back up, which is why we need this in our notes, one way to write a quadratic, so quadratics are the product of what did we say each of these expressions are? What, what type of functions would each expression be? No. Linear. linear. So it's the product of how many linear expressions? Zero. One here and one here. So two linear <coughs> expressions. Quadratics are the product, that's not how you spell product, Product of two linear expressions. Quadratics are the product of two linear expressions. Quadratics are the product of two linear expressions. So that's just one way to write the equation. There are two other main ways to write quadratic equations. So with the mean, would this be a The, so like, that's linear because there's an understood one here, and remember that multiplication is repeated one, addition, right? So that's constant additive rate of change for just that one expression, right? <coughs> Notice this is minus, but this is understood minus one time, so that's constant additive as well, right? And so that's why it's linear and linear, so the quadratic is a product of two linear. Last detail before we do the Venn diagram and get some time at the boards. I will point this out. I could do this with my current equation. What are those arrows showing? Multiplying. Doing what with that multiplication, though? It's a type of property. It starts with a D. That's distributive property. Right? I'm distributing that multiplication by B out. What is B times 50? 50B? Anybody want to push back or add on to that? Because what do we mean by 50B? Those things are being? Multiplied B numbers. And that's literally being multiplied, right? So what is B times a negative B? It's a positive B times a negative B. So it's negative, but it's B. Remember, we already have the 50B. B times 50 is 50B. I'm now doing B times B. B squared. B squared? Where are you getting that from? <coughs> the two Bs are what, though? You said it's a positive They're being what? They're being multiplied. And multiplication, or repeated multiplication, 
is shown through an exponent. exponent. But notice I know how many b's I have, so the exponent is a 2. Guys, this was the point of those Venn diagrams, is so that we go through these ideas and look at our notes and reflect on what overlaps and what's different, things like that. So we're going to have to update our Venn diagrams for a lot of this, and we have to reflect on this. Okay. Here's what we would want to notice about this quadratic equation then. In standard form, and that's the name of this form, we'll study that more heavily in the future. Standard form. Quadratics are second degree. In standard form, quadratics are second degree. Thank you for asking that question. I'm glad you asked that immediately. What do I mean by second degree? And so the exponent is 2, but do remember this is b to the first, right? So when we say an exponent of 2, it's not just that it has an exponent of 2, which exponent is 2? It's the highest one. Okay? The highest exponent is 2. So the second degree highest exponent That's what we mean. Second degree, highest exponent is 2. So I will say, we're not studying this right now, but what degree would this function have? Say 7? What about the exponents? Well, if you add those, that'd be 8, right? The exponents? Or are you looking at the coefficients? Well, it says exponent, right? Which exponent are we supposed to look at? Just at the highest exponent. So 5. That'd be a fifth degree. Okay. We're going to study that more heavily in the future, but I want you to understand that a little bit better. So I will point out, if I have a linear equation, what would the degree of a linear equation do? Two. What's the variable on the, uh, or what's the exponent on the variable? One. So linear is, do, is first degree. Linear is first degree. Remember, we always look at that x in that standard form like that to know what our variable is, the infinite. Why is it important? Well, if we're talking about degrees, right, that's second degree, it's good to know that this is first degree. Okay. I will also point out, notice how I'm multiplying a first degree times another first degree, and when I multiply two first degrees, what do I get? A second degree. There's a relationship there, I'm going to study that more heavily in a future unit. Okay. So if I have a second degree? No, 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 no. I'm pointing out, if you had something like this, the highest exponent is 5, so what would the degree be here? What? 5. Fifth degree, yes. How many degrees it is? Oh, high. Or as high as the exponents can go, so if you had... Bro, what is this a formula photo? So is the question going to ask what the degree is? No, guys. I literally just said, we're going to study that in the future. Oh, but okay. I want you to understand, if I say second degree, what does second degree mean? It means the highest exponent is 2. What would the degree of this one be? 100. That's it. I'm not testing you on that. I already said that. I'm just making sure that we understand what I mean by degree. Because I don't want you to just randomly say it's second degree. I need you to understand the degree is the highest exponent. So that would be 100th degree. We're not studying that far. What are the only three functions we're studying right now? Linear, quadratic, and exponential. That's it. But you need to understand what that term degree means. Get out your Venn diagram. No. What do you mean why? 
We're about to go over some detail. What? Why didn't you get us here earlier? Why didn't you get us here earlier? With, no, when I collected it from everyone else. I told you I needed another one. So you just did this in class? Yes. No. That, it's homework. I do appreciate your honesty, but that's not the point. Can I just, can you take this, uh, take 10% off? No, hold on. Just trust me, dude. Hold on. So, when I look at this Venn diagram, for those who are asking, okay, how do I do it? You need to pay attention to, to where things are overlapping. Where things are overlapping, it needs to be true for all those functions. So, like, when I look here at the center, how many of the functions overlap here? All three. So I need things that are true about all three functions. What is true about all three linear, exponential, and quadratic functions? They have some starting value. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think about it. Kind of. I will say that's more something that's true for linear and exponential. So that's not something we've directly talked on. Um, but it's more linear and exponential that we're going to start focus on that starting value. CJ? They have a rate of change. They have a rate of change. Caitlin? Say again? For what representation, though? Be careful. If you're not about a formula, which representation are you focused on? Is that graphical, pictorial, algebraic, tabular? Say it again. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's my point, though, right? Like, do you have to have a formula to see a quadratic in a graph or in a table? That's all I want us to recognize, right? So, there are, uh, they each have a rate of change. They have different rates of change, but they all have rates of change, and that's important because what defines a function? The rate, the rate of change, okay? So they each have a rate of change. Then um, formulas. They have for, hold on one second. Formulas for um, algebraic representations. You say they all have constants and variables? Yeah. I'm trying to... I think that that's true for everything that we've seen so far, but I don't want to necessarily write that down right now. Just, and so, like, here's the thing. Or just yes. I would say that's closer. Because, uh, okay. I will say technically you're right, but I don't want you to get lost. Because like, if I have y equals 3x, there's an understood plus 0 there. I would never write it, but it's understood. So technically there's a variable and a constant. It just could get messy if that's a fact that we just always wrote down. Okay. So they're not wrong, it's just I, I wouldn't write that down for the sake of uh, the whole class discussion. Is there anything else that is true for all three functions? CJ? Do you have a point of intersection? Do you mean intercepts? They do all have intercepts, and let's be careful, right? Because if you only have one function, you can't have a point of intersection, right? But there's at least one intercept. Uh, there's another like really big one that we're forgetting, Kennedy. So that would be the rate of change, right? That's where that rate of change comes in. Hey, let me ask you a question. Can you make a graph for uh, linear, exponential, and quadratic functions? Yes? Can you make a table for all three? Could you make an equation for all three? Could there be a word problem that is described by each of those? So what we want to notice is every or er, all three functions can be created in any representation. Right? You can use any representation. That's a big one that we want to note here. So we can use any representation. Well, is that true for all three of them? But notice, hold on, this section is only overlap for linear and exponential. Notice this circle stops right here, so that piece is not true for a quadratic. So like right here, I would want to put something that's only true for linear and for exponential. Does that make sense? Look, right here. This is where the quadratic stops, can it? You see how that's where the quadratic stops? Okay. So this is, is stuff that's true for linear and exponential, but not for quadratic. That detail is true for all three of them. The very center is what's true for all three functions.
So that does bring up an important point. What is a detail that is true for all linear and exponential functions, but not necessarily true for a quadratic? Uh, I got a line. Do exponentials have a line? I don't know. Both have a constant rate of change. Is that true? Do linear and exponential have a constant rate of change? No. Yeah. Think about a linear. It's constant additive. additive. Exponential is constant, constant multiplicative. Man, that constant shows up in both, doesn't it? Yes, sir. So both have a constant rate of change. But that is not true for a quadratic. We just looked at it. A quadratic has what type of rate of change? Linear, linear additive, right? So, Kennedy, that's what we would want to notice is that's something that's only true for linear and exponential, but it's not true for a quadratic because a quadratic has a linear additive rate of change, not a constant rate of change. Okay? Anything else that's true just for linear and exponential and not for a quadratic? I they both have starting So in an equation, they both have a starting value, mm -hmm. and the rate of change defines that equation. Okay? Mm -hmm. So starting value and rate of change define the equation. That's not as clear in um, a quadratic for sure. Equation. EQN is equation. <laughs> what were you going to say, Kayla? Um, linear and exponential and linear. So does the linear have a curve? No. So you could put that, which two have curves? Quadratic and exponential, that overlap because they have curves. But I was going to point out right here, look at this. What do these four have in common that these two do not? Symmetry. Uh, well, this has symmetry and these don't. But I want, what do these have that that, the, that one does not? Yeah, it won't always be like that. Well, how would you describe what's happening here? The function is what? Yeah. It increases, then it, it increases, then it decreases. This is decreasing, decreasing, decreasing then increasing. Oh. increasing. Oh. What is this one doing? Straight increasing. Straight up increasing. This one is only increasing. increasing. This one's only decreasing. decreasing. This one's only decreasing. decreasing. So linear and exponential only decrease, decrease or increase. Quadratics will do both. Right? That's something we would want to notice there. These are the patterns and the relationships. And so what I want you to do is you don't have to get it all right, but I need you all to take the time to look at your notes and actually use your notes to fill out what do they have in common and what do they have different. Okay? So a couple of quick last things before we do something for just five minutes or so. And it's got away from us. What is something that is true only for an exponential? Right? That's something that would go right here. What is something that's true only for an exponential? Constant multiplicative. Constant multiplicative rate of change. Right? You could even put the name with that. Does anyone remember the name of that constant multiplicative rate of change? So it's an exponential function, but there's a name for that rate of change. It's a constant factor, factor right? We multiply with factors. That constant multiplicative rate of change is called a constant factor. So one last thing I want to put in for this exponential is, is there an equation? that only exponential functions have? Kennedy? Is that true for any other function? No. So if you know, hey, I have an exponential function, what equation are you going to use? That one, right? Now you need to know what these pieces mean. You've got to know what these pieces mean. What do we mean by A? That's the starting value, specifically, like with the bell ringer, the y-intercept, right? Right. What is B? Yeah. Not just the rate of change. What type of rate of change? Multiplicative. The multiplicative rate of change, that constant that. factor. So if I say, hey, that's an exponential function, I'm going to write down that equation and identify those different details. In a similar way, 
if we have a linear function, what what is the equation we're going to use? F of x. Okay. Linear f of x. A plus b. A plus b x. Or a lot of y'all are used to m x plus b. Remember, those are the same exact equations. The focus is. What's happening between the m and the x, or the b and the x? They're being multiplied. They're being multiplied because multiplication is repeated addition. addition. Now, to be able to do some of these problems, we do need to keep in mind what is that multiplicative rate, or sorry, that additive, constant additive rate of change called? Someone said it behind me. Constant additive rates of change are called slope. slope. Okay, We've got to keep in mind that the constant additive rate of change is called a slope. We need to keep our notes out to help us with this task. So, I will remind you because I had a whole bunch of blank stairs in first block. Guys, how do I calculate slope? Whoa, 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 that, that's the equation, that's slope-intercept form of a line. I'm saying, how do I calculate just m, just what the slope is? But what are you going to do in the calculator? Okay, how about this? Look at that very number, that very first one on the problem or on the paper I just passed out. What would you do to calculate that slope? Okay, so I might go to the y-intercept. What are we going to do from the y-intercept? So here's my y-intercept, yeah? Mm -hmm. But is that my slope? No. no. I go up one to the right one, but to the right one puts me right there. That's not to the right one, is it? Or if you say to the right one it ends here, is that point on the line? It's close. But that's not on the line. We need to identify a point, guys, a very clear intersection on the grid. What is a point that is a clear intersection on the grid? Huh? 1.1. You're saying this one? But I don't know that's exactly 1.1. Maybe it's 1.2. Maybe it's 1.3. Maybe it's 1.17. I don't know. Right? Kennedy? So look at that point on the x-axis. Is that clearly on the grid? When I say grid, I'm talking about these lines right here. Is that clearly on that grid? No. No. Because it's not here. It needs to be on the grid point. It's in the middle of it, and I don't know exactly what that is. Look at the graph again. What is a point that's clearly on the grid? This one right here? Guys, what is this point? One, two, three, four. What is that point? Oh, no. Guys, I'm going to the right. How far? So the x value is 4. I'm going down 1. So it's the y is negative 1. There is 4, negative 1 on that paper. That's a clear point. Are there any other clear points on this paper? This graph, where? On the top of What's the point? I don't know. Guys, seven. use your numbers. Count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. X is X is what? Eight. The Y is two. Two. When I ask what is the point, I'm literally asking what is the X and what is the Y? Don't just say it's in the top part. T tell me where. The top part part could be way over here, couldn't it? Can be way over here? I know, I know, but here's the thing. We need to be clear with our language so that we can actually do something with the information. Right? Just saying the top part doesn't allow me to do anything. Now that I have these points, right, how am I calculating the slope? There's lots of ways to do it. There's two I recommend more than any other. Say again. What did you say? I thought someone said something about... Bro, up how far? Sure, it's so up four. Go right four. <laughs> go go to the right four times. Then go up three times. 
Does anybody want to push back on or add on to the idea that it's to the right four and up three? Does anyone want to push back on or add on to that being the slope? Sure, that's right. Hey guys, how do we calculate slope? That's the equation of a line. That's the slope intercept form of a line. Say that louder. Now, one thing I do recommend is remember what does this fraction bar mean? Divided by. But it's rise divided by run. So, Tristan, is this the rise? Did you do the rise first? No. I need to do my rise first, guys. Okay. So I'm rising how far? Three times. And then it's running to the but to the right. right. And that's important because if it's to the right, it is positive. Increasing, so positive. So what is the slope actually? Say that one more time for me. No, I don't want to say it that way. Three, what is this part? Divided, Divided by four. four. <laughs> well, if you don't do that, Kadarius, it's going to hurt you a lot when it comes to exponential functions. Okay? I promise you, I know that we're used to the language of over. Most teachers even say it that way. Even teachers that I think are good teachers. But it's not going to help you long term. It's actually going to hurt you if you say 3 divided by 4. Literally, what does that fraction bar mean? Right? So let's call it what it is. Okay? Now, I will point this out. What's the only representation you're going to see uh, rise and run in? No, which representation? Only in graphs. So we need something that works in tables too, don't we? Yeah. I want you to notice. Which variable is changing right here when it rises? The y. It's changing y. When you will most of the time see me do is not rise divided by run, because that only works in graphs. There is a Greek letter delta in mathematics that it, it means change. So this literally means change in which variable? Y. Divided by? It's not just x. What, if, what about x? The change in x. That run is the change in x. So, okay, that Greek letter delta is equivalent to change. That's what that symbol means. That Greek letter delta is equivalent to change. And so, it will benefit you if you practice using change in y divided by change in x. The change in y is your rise. The change in x is your run. We will have to pick back up there tomorrow. Um, hold, pause for one second. Uh, you have time. It's a pack. So pause, pause, pause. Um, because of where we are, we very clearly need to practice writing equations for linear and exponential functions. We do. So tomorrow, to start the day, we're going to take 30 to 45 minutes to practice writing equations of linear and exponential functions. And then we're going to end the second half of class with the, an activity from the textbook. Now, hear me very clearly on this. Because of that, I am having to push back an understanding check. I plan for tomorrow. I'm pushing it back to Wednesday. Listen and stop moving. That understanding check is going to cover you um, identifying linear, exponential, and quadratic functions in tables, graphs, um, equations, word problems, the whole nine. Not writing equations, but the understanding check on Wednesday is going to be you identifying that's a quadratic function. Is it going to be enough on my assessments to just say that's quadratic? No. no. What would you need to say about that quadratic? You would also need to tell me why. why. What are some reasons that we might believe something is quadratic? Okay, a parabola would be quadratic, but remember it's not constant for a quadratic. You would need to say it's a linear additive rate of change. Okay? You need to come up with your evidence. Remember, finish up your Venn diagram, bring it back tomorrow. So, flesh out your Venn diagram, bring it tomorrow.
it. No, I'm not taking it. Please, keep on losing it. Don't lose it. There's a whole pack of notebooks back there I can give you if you need one. Alright, I'm not taking it. Okay. Thank you.